Before we start, here's a quick geography test. How many continents are there? Seven? Not correct. In fact, our home planet is home to a secret eighth continent that is larger than India. However, since the huge continent was long since swallowed up by the sea, it does not appear on our modern world maps. What the background of this mysterious area is all about and which puzzles still need to be solved in this regard, we will now show you. Before we jump into it, be sure to hit the like button and ring the notification bell to keep up to date with future videos. Also, stick around until the end to learn about one of the most amazing historical mysteries that we guarantee you've never heard before. The History of the Continents North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Asia, Australia, and Antarctica. Anyone who's paid even a little bit of attention in class will know that these are the seven official continents of our planet. If you take a closer look at the world map, you'll see that the shapes of the individual landmasses fit together almost perfectly, just like oversized pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. As most of you probably already know, this is by no means a coincidence. If we put the pieces together correctly, we get the supercontinent Pangaea. This existed around 250 million years ago and united all the Earth masses on our globe that were surrounded by a single ocean. About 50 million years later, a process began that split Pangaea in two, Gondwana to the south and Laurasia to the north. While the two large continents broke up into smaller pieces over the course of thousands of years, today's continents gradually formed. In the same breath, the continents drifted further and further apart, separated from newly formed seas such as the Atlantic. We find the reason for these elemental land migrations in the Earth's interior, more precisely in the boiling hot currents of the outer Earth's shell. These ensure that the engine that keeps the continents and oceans in suspense never falters. As the plates move across the globe at a slow pace, some of them soften or break and elsewhere collisions occur. As is well known, we find the most diverse natural structures on the individual continents, from mighty mountains and dense forests to endless deserts, canyons, and plains. The different land masses impressively show us the beauty of our planet, and the mysterious underwater world of Zealandia is no exception with the huge difference that very few of its elevations protrude from the water, yet they are still visible. In fact, this includes the two main islands of New Zealand as well as New Caledonia further north, which flies the French flag. One reason the sunken island is being literally resurrected is that Zealandia is rich in raw materials. Here we find, for example, iron ore, oil, and gas deposits. Zealandia. As mentioned earlier, Zealandia easily eclipses India in terms of size. The area of the South Asian country is around 3.3 million square kilometers. In contrast, the dimensions of the underwater island amount to an impressive 4.9 million square kilometers. Incidentally, we have Bruce Luyendik to thank for the fact that we now refer to the mostly submerged continent as Zealandia. However, the American geologists used the term in 1995 to use it is a collective term for New Zealand and a few other islands, and not to describe an eighth continent. But this is exactly what has been the subject of heated debate for some time. Some researchers are vehemently demanding that Zealandia be included in the ranks of the official continents. We'll explain to you later why this project is overshadowed by a number of hurdles. First of all, let's take a look at the geographic and geological characteristics of this fascinating stretch of land. In fact, around 94% of Zealandia lies below the water's surface, more precisely in the southwestern Pacific. Thanks to scientific research that's been carried out in recent years, we know that the so-called Lord Howe Rise is one of the largest elevations in Zealandia that lies below sea level. 
This submarine mountain range is more than 1,600 kilometers long and 500 kilometers wide in some places. Located between 1 and 3 kilometers below sea level, some parts of Lord Howe Rise reach a height of more than 2,800 meters. Norfolk Ridge, Campbell Plateau, and Chatham Rise are among the most impressive peaks that the underwater part of Zealandia has to offer. Sinking of a Continent With regard to the geological composition, the unofficial continent consists of continental crust, or the uppermost rock layer of the so-called lithosphere. In the case of Zealandia, the continental crust has an average thickness of 10 to 30 kilometers. For comparison, the Earth's crust of above-ground continents is significantly thicker at an average of 30 to 45 kilometers. The experts suspect that the reasons for these abnormalities can be traced back to various tectonic processes. Millions of years ago, Zealandia was still part of the supercontinent Gondwana. However, at that time, the Pacific Plate began to drift towards the eastern side of the gigantic landmass. As a result, layers of sediment rose and piled up to form mighty mountains. But then this natural process reversed itself, causing the plates to move apart again over a period of a hundred million years. This is how Zealandia split off from today's Australia, and in the same breath, the Tasman Sea was born, the body of water that today separates New Zealand and down under. As the Tasman seafloor rose steadily, so did Zealandia's fate. What was once a landmass was swallowed up by the expanding arm of the sea. However, the sunken continent celebrated at least a small comeback a few million years later. The Pacific Plate collided with the Australian Plate, so that New Zealand and its mountains pressed to the surface. Traces of the Past it's obvious that Zealandia is home to mainly sea creatures these days, but how did things actually look when the landmass was not yet erased from the world map? In this regard, research shows that Zealandia was once a place of intense volcanism. Particularly striking, the magma examined so far has the same basic composition as the samples in Antarctica and Australia. However, the experts still don't know what's behind the volcanism of Zealandia. One explanation is based on a so-called mantle plume, or the upflow of molten rock from the depths of the Earth's mantle. Zealandia may have once moved across such a location, which then initiated hotspot volcanism. But these are not the only traces of the past that have kept the experts in suspense to this day. If you want to know how the natural face of Zealandia once formed, you should take a closer look at Curio Bay. In the Tranquil Bay on New Zealand's South Island, for example, we find some fossilized tree trunks and preserved rootstocks. Analysis of the petrified forest shows that the trees sprouted from the Jurassic and were related to modern cowrie trees. We owe the fact that we can still marvel at the former floor of the petrified continent to this day to the volcanism already mentioned. The plants were once buried under streams of volcanic mud and debris and thus naturally preserved for posterity. Later, the erosion together with the surf ensured that the petrified primeval forest came back to daylight. And what about the animals? In fact, researchers were lucky enough to come across the jaw of an unspecified mammal near New Zealand's Otago region. Because of this, it's reasonable to assume that during the last ice age, larger parts of Zealandia rose out of the water than today. Is Zealandia a continent? In view of Zealandia's literally turbulent past, a central question arises. Does it make sense to recognize the largely submerged area as an eighth continent? It's precisely this question that the scientific minds cannot seem to agree on. In detail, there are different criteria that a region of the Earth must meet in order to be considered a continent. Above all, this includes the fact that the continental crust must stand out sufficiently from the oceanic crust. At the same time, the continental crust must be thicker than the oceanic crust. But the natural condition of the region in question is also an important aspect. According to this, a continent must have geological diversity and be home to three basic 
basic types of rock. Last but not least, the definition of a continent is always a question of size. The corresponding landmass must therefore have a very large area of land in order to not be classified as a microcontinent. How exactly this magnitude is quantified, however, is not determined even in the ranks of scientists. Those in favor of including Zealandia on the official list of continents make different arguments. Since the landmass has a considerable area of almost 5 million square kilometers, it should overcome the specified size hurdle with ease. Because Zealandia is far enough away from Australia, it should not be viewed as a fragment but as an independent region. The narrowest area that separates Zealandia and Australia is a sea trench 25 kilometers wide and over 3,500 meters deep. Although more than 90% of Zealandia is covered in water, it still stands an average of 1.1 kilometers from the bottom of the oceanic crust. In addition, previous studies of the region suggest that the underwater continent also meets the minimum geological requirements. There we find a pronounced variety of rock types made up of granite, slate, and rocks containing silicon. Although the crust of Zealandia is 10 to 30 kilometers thicker than that of the official continent, Compared to other oceanic crusts, which are on average no thicker than 7 kilometers, it appears much more massive. All of these arguments would ultimately be incontestable if the continent discussion were not overshadowed by one central fact. Zealandia is largely underwater. However, since it's undisputed that the region was once dry and later split off from Australia before it sank into the sea, we're dealing here with a question of definition. Does a landmass lose its status as a continent if it literally disappears from the surface, or should it continue to be viewed as a continent even after it's given way to the rising oceans? Even if we don't have an answer for this today, one thing is for sure, scientific minds will continue to debate this issue for many years to come. Truthfully, I think we can all most likely agree that Zealandia will not be added to the map any day soon. While the continent may technically exist, the fact that it's hidden underwater seems to secure its fate in terms of its appearing on modern maps. Since the landmass cannot be fully explored and is certainly uninhabitable, there would be no real reason to add it to our maps other than for the simple amusement of it. But who knows, as time passes by there's a good chance that the continent may eventually show itself once again and emerge from its watery grave. Unfortunately, it remains to be seen whether or not Zealandia will ever be considered a continent. For all intents and purposes, it seems quite unlikely that this buried island will ever resurface. However, greater things have certainly been accomplished. Since the island has been buried under a watery grave for thousands of years, there's certainly reason to believe that it may be resurfaced by scientific experts at some point so that they can conduct a deeper analysis on the island and try to better understand the plants and animals that once lived there. If this is true and the island is excavated at some point, the endeavor would first involve removing all of the water from the top of the continent, bringing this long-forgotten island to the surface after countless years. Unfortunately, it does seem increasingly unlikely that this will ever be done. After all, the costs associated with such an endeavor would surely be prohibitive. Regardless, most geologists are simply happy to see that the landmass hasn't completely been forgotten over the years and most historians are still hopeful that dive teams will be able to conduct further research in the future so that we can better understand our world's history and the many details that led to it being buried underwater in the first place. As we all know, our world map has remained unchanged for hundreds of years. While islands are known to come and go all the time, we've not added or removed a continent from our modern maps for a very long time. Because of this, it can be an understanding difficult task for researchers, historians, and geographers to come to terms with adding a new continent to our map. To make matters worse, there isn't necessarily one agreed-upon method of defining a new continent, as we've never had to do it at any point in human history. We have a general guide of what classifies as a continent, but since we've never been tasked with this issue before, we really don't know how to proceed. 
What do you think of the fascinating underwater continent in the southwestern Pacific? Should we recognize Zealandia as the eighth continent, or leave our world map untouched? We're looking forward to your comments. If you enjoyed today's video, please give us a thumbs up. Also, be sure to stick around and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all of our future uploads.